So here I am just wandering around. I've got a glass of, believe it or not, wild ass rose in my hand. That's what it's called. And who do I run into but my teacher? Because believe it or not, and all this stuff where I talk about on my blog, where I try and sm sound smart about wine, she teaches me everything I know. So for all the people that are writing in comments saying, like, I don't know anything about wine, it's because my great teacher here, Leslie Provo, she taught it to me. It's great to see you. Oh, thanks. That's <laughs> nice things to say. <laughs> um, talk to me about Ontario wine a little bit, because the stuff that you've been teaching me so far is all Italian and all French. Uh, and don't worry. We're going to get that. We're going to get there. The very last lecture we do is on Ontario wine, uh -huh. and I'm very passionate about Ontario wine, so it's going to be a good lecture. You are. Yeah. yeah. No, You've talked about it. Yeah. I've, uh, I've managed wine lists at restaurants that were all BQA. I've done quite a bit of work for Wine Country Ontario, and it's all easy work because I really, really believe in the wines. And you know what? More than everything else, I want to live right next to a world-class wine country, and so I am fully willing to go out there and find the things and support the people that are doing the right things and, um, you know, help make that happen in whatever small way that I can. Nice. Do you think that, like, for instance, the course that we're in now, and every, every beginner course I hear about starts with, say, France. Is that because France is the, the big daddy of wine, or is that yeah. the place where you should start your education, or what? I don't know about should, but it's definitely how it's done. So yeah. if you're in California and you take, well, California might be an exception. But anywhere in the world, if you start your wine studies, you inevitably are going to go back to France. Um, you're going to go back to the old world, bef usually before you get to the new world. Okay. Yeah. Exciting stuff that you see out of the new world. What do you, what do you like about new world wine versus old world wine? If you have to yeah, pick. yeah, if I have to pick. Well, I have to say, like, right now, I think, particularly talking about Ontario, I'm really excited about the wine styles that are coming out of Ontario. I think um, New World tends to both push the envelope, but also sometimes lags behind with sort of, I don't want to say outmoded styles, but sometimes it maybe takes a little longer for the consumers of New World wines to kind of catch on and move forward and become more sophisticated wine drinkers. Um, so right now, I think Ontario in particular is in a really great place because we've moved away from this like very high levels of oak. Um, like for me, I think Cab Franc from Ontario is so great, yeah. and yet so often when a winemaker gets truly ripe Cab Franc in their hands, I feel like they put too much oak on it. But I, but I also do feel we've had a couple of really nice hot vintages recently where I haven't seen that happen, so that's really, really exciting. Um, I think Ontario's new. I mean, how much experience do our winemakers typically have under their belts? Not that much. It is strange, because I walk around and there's guys that are talking about how they started their winery in like 91. Oh, saying starting if in 91. 2002. Yeah, that's like you know, yeah. And then I was just talking to the guy, I think it was, what is it, Calamus? Is that the, the winery? That, yeah, he was saying that, um, you know, you got to remember, they might start their winery in like 1999, but they had to plant the vines years, years before, before that, that. Yeah. and then work on it. Um, last question. If there's someone like me who wants to learn about wine, but maybe they don't want to do a college course or anything like that, what, what's your advice on if they don't want to go to school for it or any of that formal education, where should they start? How can they learn about wine right away? Well, I mean, you can head to your LCBO store and start thinking about what you're going to buy before you buy it, whether you get a book or find someone who's blogging to follow and buy what they're buying um, is one way to do it. Um, when are you going to start your blog again, by the way? Oh, yeah. I put some things up this weekend. I'm, I'm on it. Um, <laughs> I was like, I'm writing a blog. She's like, I have a blog. I'm like, cool. When did you update it? She's like, yeah. yeah. It's got it's great technical backbone, but I'm just not. <laughs> I did put a couple of reviews up. Anyways, okay. it's a work in progress. All right. Um, and if you don't want to do that, heck, you can hire almost any sommelier in Toronto to come into your house and do classes in your house for you and your friends. That's uh, cool. Yeah, totally. It's a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what else could, and you know, besides that, I don't know. You have to you have to find a way to discipline yourself. Whether you're taking notes and yeah, but you have to think about what you're drinking. Otherwise, yeah. you're just drinking. But that's not so bad either. Or you can try and butter up your wine teacher when you run into her at events, and maybe she'll just teach you about wine anyway. It's cool. All right. It's hard to get an A class in my class. No kidding. <laughs> I know. Uh, apparently, my nose still needs work when my palate's doing okay. I'm still a little bitter about that, but whatever. Um, well, that's just the first test. It's all it's all good from here. Let's go, thanks a lot for talking to me, and uh, enjoy the wine. Yeah, thank you.